and the fact that his assistant coach, Chris Armas, is taking those training sessions. In fact, it's come out of the camp that they're referring to him jokingly as Ted Lasso. For those of you who don't know or watch Ted Lasso, that's an American coach who comes to England to coach Premier League team and doesn't really know much about the game. So it's not a very nice thing nope. to say about somebody. Jules, no matter what, it seems that this dressing room cannot stop these leaks from happening here at Manchester United. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I mean, the criticism, it's not the first time this season, is it? Is it? Because we heard the same about Kieran McKenna, the, the, the assistant of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who's now in charge at Ipswich. Or again, it was a similar thing that the players didn't like his personality, uh, his training sessions, his advice, whatever. What I found the most surprising is not so much that this story is leaking uh, on our website, or that's the, what the players think, if, if it's true, and I'm, I'm sure it's true. Uh, otherwise, we would not report it the way we did. I was more surprised by the press conference that Ralph Reinick uh, gave today, ahead of the game against Southampton tomorrow, where the question was, of course, asked to him about, about the Ted Lasso, uh, rep our report on the Ted Lasso and the, the discontent within the dressing room about the, the, the training uh, sessions. And, and his answer, I thought, was very, very unconvincing. Instead of coming out almost all guns blazing, saying like this is rubbish, this is nonsense, there's there's unity, there's this, then that, we're working hard, we do this. It was very much like, well, we've improved in the last two weeks because well, it's thanks to our training, and you know we do rondos at training, and I'm like, what? I I literally could not believe what I was hearing as an answer to what is a, a very serious story, if it's true, on United, the dressing room, the relationship between the technical staff and the players, and yet this is why he comes up with, oh, but we do rondos at training, so it's all fine. I, I really could not believe it. Uh, what have you made of it all, Ale? Well, at some point, this group of players, this core group of players of Manchester United, have to burden responsibility for the struggles of this club. Mourinho wasn't good enough. So Oscar wasn't good enough. The assistant coaches hasn't been good enough. Rangnick not good enough. And the assistant coaches not good enough either. Now, I don't know about Robo, but I would suggest that in the long list of reasons as to why a team struggles, the assistant coach is very low on that list. I mean, you can come up with all sorts of reasons and explanations as to why you're not doing well. But if you have to go take a shot at the assistant coach and how he runs training, Man, you're really reaching. Now, let's just assume for a second and accept the fact that, yes, Chris Armas, when he's out there, he's running an old-fashioned training session that doesn't address your personal needs as a player. Here's an old concept. Maybe. I don't know. A noble idea. How about you do training on your own after training? How about you take one of the assistant coaches or one of the personnel that you actually like and like to work with, because there's about 20 of them on the bench, and you go and do the, that personal workout that you want to do for 10, 15 minutes following the old-fashioned training session. How about you do that? What's stopping you from doing that? Instead, you go and take a shot at the assistant coach. And then you make it personal, because when you add the Ted Lasso comparison, then this becomes personal as well and demeaning and unnecessary, and he does nothing, does nothing to make this team any better. Again, when are the players within this locker room actually going to take responsibility for what's actually happening on the field on the weekends? Uh, Robbo, do you think that this is going to derail their chances to make the top four, all this outside noise that's going on? Uh, well, it's certainly not going to help. You, you want a happy camp, you want people uh, doing the right things. And the reason that Ranić and the criticism from the players has been that they do too many 11 versus 11s, the way that you get tactical um, game plans across is by doing 11 versus 11. And the reason that they didn't play well under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is because tactically they weren't good enough. They might have done a lot of individual work, and I'm not sure that was the case with some of the improvement or lack of improvement with the players. But to get the tactical side of the game right, you have to play 11 versus 11. If they were good tactically, Ranić wouldn't have to come in and do all that sort of stuff. So I think the players, as Ali just said and Jules said, the players, like most footballers, are selfish. They're looking after themselves. Oh, they want to be looked after themselves. You know, can we do training for me? This is what I want. If I want to be a better player, I want to be able to do what I want to do. Sometimes you have to do it for the team. and You have to be better tactically. 11 versus 11 is usually the way you do it.
Uh, Stuart, we were asking the panel yesterday, and I know we continue to ask it, but it does change for many. It changed for Stevie Nicol yesterday. Who for you right now is making the top four? Well, I don't think there's anybody that I would say you're, they're going to go and make the top four because they're playing so well. In the, in, the, in the main place at the moment, I would say were Arsenal because they had a very good win against Wolves. I don't fancy West Ham over the course of the season because David Moyes has done a great job, but they still have that inferiority complex. They don't go against big sides and really take the game to the opposition. So they're going to lose games and not win games or, uh, as many as they should. Arsenal are still inconsistent. We saw that in the FA Cup not so long ago where they were outplayed by Nottingham Forest. But they are in that good position with a couple of games in hand. Spurs under Conte, I don't think he's got his ideas across. When he was the manager of Juventus, when he was the manager of Inter, when he was the manager of Chelsea the first year, they had the best defensive record in all those seasons. At the moment, it looks as though the opposition can score too many goals. We saw that against Brighton. We certainly saw it against Southampton. And then Manchester United, you've just mentioned all the problems they've got, tactically, with the manager, with the assistant manager. So nobody's actually throwing their hat into the ring and saying, we're going to be top four. But at the moment, I would say Arsenal just about, uh, just about make it. Uh, Jules, does that convince you a little bit more that it could be Arsenal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on board with Stu, of course. I, mean, I said it on Wednesday night. I also said that none of them deserve to be fourth. That's pretty clear. Uh, that none of them is playing well enough, none of them is consistently enough to finish fourth. And when you see the gap with the, with the front three, and especially the, the, the top two, you realise how far behind all those teams that we just mentioned are. Uh, although, if Arsenal win the two games in hand that they have over Chelsea, for example, then I think they just come back, they come three points behind Chelsea in the table, which is, which is ridiculous, really. So, I still think Arsenal, because also they only have the league, when West Ham will have still to play in the FA Cup in the Europa League, United have the Champions League as well, not the FA Cup anymore, uh, and, and, and Spurs are not in Europe, but still have the FA Cup. I think Arsenal having only one game a week and all the week to prepare for it, and by the way, can only have the, the players sent off in one competition, I think that's a big help. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.